Branch protection in VS Code provides UI that can prevent commits to specific Git branches. This can be useful if you want to instead require that all changes to those branches have to go through pull requests. Let's take a look at how branch protection works. Now, the first thing you need to understand about VS Code's branch protection is that it will not actually prevent any changes to that branch. It is a UI element that is going to work in combination with uh, GitHub's concept of branch protection. So over on GitHub, you can actually go and prevent any Git pushes to a specific branch or require that you have to go through a pull request or require other things such as passing a certain number of tests or having to get approved by certain people. So that is the GitHub concept. And that is going to apply no matter what tool someone is using. The VS Code concept of branch protection is going to work in combination with that. And it's going to instead show UI that will help users avoid getting into a state where they've made a commit to a protected branch. So for example, if you're over on GitHub and the main branch is protected, the VS Code concept of branch protection will prevent you from going and making a commit to the main branch. Without VS Code's branch protection, you could happily make a commit. And then when you go and try to push it, you get a big warning from GitHub saying, hey, you can't do that. So you can avoid that with VS Code's branch protection. Branch protection is probably going to be most useful if you have a large number of contributors that are using VS Code, because it can just be a nice convenience. And again, avoid that extra step of being blocked when you try to actually push a commit. Let's take a look at some of these settings that you can use to configure branch protection. So I'm here in the VS Code repo, and we actually already have branch protection configured for this project. If we open up the settings here with control comma or command comma on Mac, we can see some of these settings. Now, for most cases, you're probably going to want to configure branch protection as a workspace specific setting. So we'll switch over to the workspace settings here and then search for branch protection. The first setting here, Git branch protection, is the main branch protection setting. So this controls which branches are actually going to be protected. Any of the branches listed here, you will not be able to make a commit to directly. You can see in this case, we have listed the main branch, the distro branch, and then any branches that start with the word release. So release and then anything else after that, because of this star here, is also going to be protected. Once a branch is protected, you can see that we get this little lock icon down here. So that's telling us that this branch is protected and we will not be able to commit directly to it. Let's see what happens if we try making a commit to one of these protected branches. So I'm going to go to a random file here, just make a edit, and then let's go try to commit this. Again, we are on the main branch down here, which is protected. I can then go and stage the change. You can see that I have this little lock icon, which is again telling me this is a protected branch, but I'm going to go try to make a commit anyways. So I'm going to say commit here over in VS Code. And you can see that we are now getting this warning here that's saying, hey, you're trying to commit to a protected branch. This might be something that you still want to do in a few cases. So um, if you are an administrator, for example, you might be able to override GitHub's branch protection. So you could select commit anyways. But in many cases, for normal contributors, you will instead want to do something like commit to a new branch or just cancel out of this and create your own branch um, and fix it yourself. The commit to new branch is a convenient option that will instead make VS Code automatically go and create a branch for us. So if we say commit to new branch here, you can see that we have uh, gone to the new branch creation flow. So we can enter a new branch name. I'll do something like my test branch. You can see that VS Code has now automatically created my test branch for us and made the commit to it. Now we could go and push this commit to GitHub and then create a pull request back to main, which was the protected branch in the first case. So that is the basic branch protection flow. Again, the VS Code side of this is the UI that is going to warn you when you try committing to a protected branch. There's a few other settings that are also related to branch protection that we can take a look at. So let's go back to the settings here with control comma or command comma on Mac. And again, looking at the branch protection settings in the workspace section of our repository. Now the next setting down here is the git branch protection prompt setting. And this controls what happens when you actually try committing to a protected branch. You saw that last time when we tried committing to a protected branch, it showed us this warning and um, was asking us what we wanted to do. We could either create a new branch or bypass things or just cancel it. By default, it's always going to show that prompt to you. But we could actually save some time if we always want to commit to a new branch by changing this to always commit to new branch. With this enabled, if we now try making a commit, so let's go back to the main protected branch here, go back to our arrays file and introduce the same change again. So we'll just go and add that new line, go stage that and say test. Now, when I say commit here, so we say commit, you can see that VS Code has gone directly to the new branch flow here. So it skipped that extra dialogue. It is just asking us what our new branch should be called. So I can call this another test branch, go and create that. And VS Code has now created another test branch down here, made the commit to it. And we could go and create a pull request by pushing that to GitHub. Now, if you are committing to new branches, there's another VS Code setting that can be quite helpful for quickly generating throwaway branch names. So let's go back to our settings here 
and search for, instead of branch protection, we're going to search for branch name. And you can actually go down to the get branch random name generator here. So uh, branch random name enabled setting. If I turn this on, now when you try committing to a protected branch, VS Code will go and try to uh, generate a random name for it based on a adjective plus animal name. So let's go back to main here and take a look at this. There are a few settings also here that allow you to control how branch name generation works. But let's take a look at the default behavior, which is just going to be a random adjective and animal name. So I have my change here. I'm going to go and make the exact same change again. So we'll say uh, arrays, try to make a commit to main. And you can see that it's now generated a random name. Again, it is just a adjective plus animal name for our new branch. This name does not actually describe anything in our branch. So it's sort of a throwaway name that you can use to just quickly generate pull requests, but I could just press enter here. And now that new branch has been created for us. And we were able to just very quickly get to a state where we have a branch that we can push to GitHub and then create a pull request. There's one more setting that we should take a look at, and that is how VS Code's branch protection can integrate with GitHub branch protection. So if we go back to our settings here and we search for branch protection again, let's look at the last setting in the list here, which is the GitHub branch protection setting here. Now this setting is on by default and it controls if VS Code is going to try to observe the branch protection rules that are configured on a given GitHub repository. So when you configure branch protection on GitHub, with this setting enabled, VS Code will try to synchronize its branch protection with what is enabled on GitHub. If we actually go to GitHub here, so let's take a look at a repository over on GitHub. I'm not gonna go into the real details of how branch protection works here, but it's configured under the settings and the repository. You'd go to the branches here, and then you can go and add a branch protection rule. So we could say, uh, let's go protect the main branch, for instance. So we'll say main, you could also do a star here if you wanted a glob pattern for uh, like we're doing with releases over in the VS Code repo here. Then you can configure the rules that you actually want to apply. So we could say something like, let's require a pull request here and require approvals for that pull request as well. And then go and create that branch protection rule. Now, once you've created this branch protection rule over on GitHub, anybody that tries pushing to this uh, branch, they'll have to go through a pull request. So no matter what tool they're using, this GitHub branch protection rule applies to everything. With the VS Code setting here and the VS Code side of branch protection, now VS Code will also go and show UI that can help prevent you from getting into a state where you are trying to push to a protected branch. It will remind you and say, hey, you actually need a new branch here so that you can create a pull request. You can't commit directly to the main branch. So this is a useful setting for making sure the two worlds, VS Code and GitHub, remain synchronized. So that's an introduction to branch protection in VS Code. You can use it alongside GitHub branch protection to encourage a good workflow for contributors and require that all changes go through pull requests.